Hello, my name's Julie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a couple of Christmas cards. Both cards are going to use the same die. I'm using some products uh, from Denise Bodie Designs and the links to all the products I'm using will be in the description box below. Now I'm going to attempt a card that I've never made before and um, yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. So I'm starting off with a piece of 300 GSM white cardstock and I'm cutting that. My card is going to be 6 inches by 5 inches. So I'm cutting this at 6 inches. Oh, I could cut it at... Uh, at Five yeah. So I've got to cut it at five inches actually. So I cut that five inches. So it's going to be five inches wide and six inches deep. Because I'm going to use this die in it. Now this is a layered die and I don't know the brand of it, but it comes in a set of three, like, and that's it there, and they layer on top of each other. I'm using the most open one. So I'm going to need that piece and I'm going to also need a piece that is as big as my card front. So I need a piece that's 5 inches by 6 inches. Well, I might give it a little border. I'll make it the full 5 inches by 6 inches because then I can trim it down if I want to. Okay, now, uh, what I have to do now is take this to my die cutting machine and cut this out of this piece here. First of all I need to score this so I've got so that I know where the actual card front is so I'm going to score this at six inches. Um, burnish that with my bone folder and then this piece fits perfectly on there like so. Okay so I need to cut this out of my card front. So I'm going to take this to my um, big shop and I'm going to cut that out of there. Now, for this piece, I want a frame to go over this. So I'm going to, I've got this um, Hero Arts Infinity dies. This is the rectangular set. So I want to choose one that's probably slightly smaller than that. So I think that one would be perfect, actually. So I'm going to cut that out of this piece here. So I'm going to go to my big shot and do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I have. I've cut that out of here, out of the front of my card. And um, I've decided to leave those little heart pieces in there. They're all in there, so I thought, well, I'll just leave them there. And then I have cut this square out of the uh, front panel that I created. Now I'm going to actually run this through an embossing folder but I'll do that in a minute. Oh no, I better go and do that now actually because I want to put some acetate on the back of this. So I'm going to go and do that now. I'm going to go and emboss this with an embossing folder. Okay, so I use the Cuddlebug, I think it's called Swiss Dots or something like that. It's just a dotty pattern. Um, it, it was hard to find one that was wide enough actually and if you have a close look at this you can see that it's got a little fraction there where 
there is no pattern but I have got the ability to trim that down so we'll see how we go I might do that so now I'm going to cut a piece of acetate I hope this cutter will cut it all right so um, let me just move that out of the way so I'm going to cut this slightly smaller than this dimension so I'm going to cut it at four and three quarters by five and three quarters so if I go four and three quarters there yeah, that cuts right by five and three quarters a bit hard to see I guess on the camera where the actual acetate is that's what I've cut it at, four and three quarters by five and three quarters. Now I want to add that to the back of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glue around here. So I'm going to put it, I'm not going to put it too close to this edge because it always leaks out. I'm just going to run it along here. Now I want to make sure it's going to stick, so I'm going to put a bit of glue there. And then I'm going to stick my acetate down, trying not to get glue everywhere. I'm going to use a tissue and I'm going to sort of wipe out not towards the hole, the opening, so I'm swiping it back towards the outside edge of the acetate. So there we go. So now I'm going to, this is going to go on top of that but before I do that, I need to stick this onto that, like so. So this is going to be a bit tricky. This is where I'll probably get in a big mess. So let's put a row of glue along this fine, fine border. We are lucky enough that we do have a bit of grace here because this square opening does come over onto this pattern a little. Okay, so right side down and put that on centrally as we can and once again I'm going to wipe out with that because I'm trying not to get it on my acetate maybe that's that straight to be honest might be a bit better has come out okay so I've got all those little hearts now I use the sticky end of this uh, pick-me-up tool to just pick them all out now I'm going to attach this panel to the front of my card there so that will give us will give us Now, did I want to trim that down a little bit or not? I don't think so. I think, uh, yes, I think I will just trim it down a fraction. Just a little fraction. I'm just going to cut. Okay. 
about a sixteenth of an inch off each edge. I'm not measuring it, I'm just eyeballing it. Probably won't be a good thing. Okay, so now I'm going to attach that to that with just that little border around it. Now, I'm just wondering whether I should ink around the edge of it or not. I think I will. I think I'll just grab a gold ink pad and just ink around the edge of that. that to that. So I'm going to run my glue around the outside edge of this. Now I'm gluing onto acetate here so I want to be careful with the glue but I want enough glue on there that it's going to stick and stay stuck. that down and pop this into place. I'm trying to line that frame up with the inside of the cutout that we had original, so this original cut out. So that lattice panel is going back into the original hole that it was cut out of. There we go, we've got that now. So it's neat on the back and neat on the front and we've got our um, acetate panel in there. Okay so I have used this um, poinsettia dye from Denise Bodie and um, all of the products that I've used that I've got links for I'll put them in the description box below and um, I haven't got links for everything but I'll try. So now I'm going to just shape these a bit. So, all we need to do is just push into the back of the petals, that shapes them up. This, um, this die makes a really pretty poinsettia. Got uh, what five, one, two, three, four, five layers. So I am going to make two different sizes. So to do that, all I basically do is leave the bottom two layers off, and that make gives me a, a bit smaller flower. There's lots of different ways to shape flowers, and um, if you are interested in you know learning different ways of shaping your flowers I mean you can pull out you can rub around go around in circles all that sort of thing so there's lots of different ways and like there's about a million videos on YouTube of doing your flowers in different ways so and different flowers you know are formed in different ways so you wouldn't sort of do this technique probably for a rose or something like that hard to tell which is the back and the front of this because they're both the same 
same but anyway so now what I'm going to do is pick the largest layers and work my way out from there and I'm just going to use my art glitter glue and this is where I generally get glue everywhere you can see that they've got a little hole in the middle and um, instead of using glue you can also use um, brads so you could just put a brad through this to keep it in place but I find that the glue with the brad sometimes it can spin around and your leaves get out of alignment or your petals get out of alignment so I'm just layering them on top of each other so that um, let me get a tool here it's taking a little bit of time to grab which is unusual for art glitter glue because it usually grabs straight away now I'll put this one on and you can see I'm staggering the layers so that um, they're not just sitting on top of each other in the same pattern so this is uh, pearlized it's pearlized paper it's and uh, not mirror paper so it's the pearl one which I like a bit better it's not as um, gaudy I suppose you could say would be a word for it not as bright a bit more vintagey looking I guess and then the tiny little one Just pops in the middle, finish it off. Okay, so you can see our flower now has got a bit of dimension and shape to it, it's not just sitting there flat. Do all this excess glue off, gets everywhere, doesn't it? Well, it does with me anyway. I try to keep it nice and tidy, but not always that successful okay it's probably glue under there okay so I was going to put this just on there like so then I thought maybe I should put two so if I pop that one up a little bit higher now because this card is already five inches wide I don't really want anything poking over the edge because if I want to put it in an envelope it's going to make it a bit more tricky so um, I'm going to position that about there and I'm wondering whether I want to put another smaller point poinsettia here so let's say uh, that size so it'd have like full row of them across the bottom basically or whether I just go for the one on there and I've got some gold ribbon here I'm going to tie a bow which is a feat on its own for me I am not a good bow tire at all What I mean, it could be here forever. I need to try and get this right. So I thought maybe if I put a bow there, I would like to put a bow there, no matter how many flowers I've got on there. So I'll just get some scissors and cut this off. I cut that on an angle. Ah, oh, these damn scissors. Let's see if I've got another pair that will do the job a bit better. Not as much. So so I pop that down there, and then I've got. My poinsettia there. Right. 
necessarily have to have the one at above or below. What about if I just have it like that? And that poking through and that sitting down there, or even on a bit of an angle like that. Because I still have to have my sentiment on here. I think I'm going to go for that. What do you think? Yep. Okay. So, bow first. You can also use your hot glue gun to attach your bits and pieces. But I do find that um, the art glitter glue does usually grab pretty quickly. See, I think I might put a little gem in the middle of that. I'm just going to use these clear um, gems from Kaiser Craft. Kaiser Craft, Kaiser Craft, not really sure how most people pronounce that. Um, where are my scissors? Ah, my tweezers, I mean. I'm just going to... Hold that in place for a moment while I'm messing around here. And let's get a gem. Put a little dab of glue in the middle there. One of the larger gems here, I think. Pop that down in there. Just a little bit of bling. It's Christmas after all. And then I will attach that flower to my card. That bow has stuck, I hope. Looks like it, yes. So now I'm going to add some glue to the back of this. Now bear in mind that the back of this will be visible. Did I have that? Just so that that was coming through there. So pop that down there. So when we open this, the back of this is sort of visible. It's not a hundred percent visible, but you can see that there's something there. So I'll have a look in the tick and see if I need to put one of these behind it to camouflage it a bit. Now because we're sticking this to acetate, I'm just going to hold it for a minute and see if I can bring that bow out a little more. Yep, that's fine. So it's a slightly darker gold than the... Um, Pearlized gold, but I think it blends in fine. So when we open it, oh no, that's fine. You can't really. I have got, you know, I could put this in there. Actually, I probably, probably will put that in there anyway, just as a little bit of a decoration. Maybe the bigger one. I don't want too much bulky, so I'm not going to put the whole flower. We could do that, couldn't we? I think I will. Yep, I think I will. So a little dab of glue on there. I'm not going to shape it. It's just going to be on there flat because, as I said, I don't want a big bulky flower there. And I'm going to put some glue on the backs of all of these petals because I don't want them flapping about and getting oops, and getting caught on anything. So I'm gonna put that there, something like that. So that looks quite cute, doesn't it? Okay. So I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll come back. 
Okay, so I'm going to just use this little Merry Christmas. I print these out on my computer. I just type up Merry Christmas and then I change the fonts to all different fonts and sizes. And then I've got them available to use as I want them. So I'm just going to... I'm not even going to ink around the edges of this. I'm just going to stick it down there because I just want it to blend in. I don't want to make a feature of it. So it's just printed on normal copier paper so it hasn't got much weight to it. I'll just pop it under there and get it straight. Okay, so there we have our card. We've got that decoration inside that just hides that back of that. And we've got the pretty see-through pattern. So I will, I may um, even, no I won't, I was going to say I might put some pattern paper behind there but I won't because I want it to stay white. So yeah, so that's my um, card. I'm going to put, I'm going to stamp a sentiment in here but I'm going to stamp it down here so that it's behind that and you don't see it when you, um, so I've got some here, these are crafters choice. So for example, we've got joy to the world. That would fit behind there. So get a block and get it on there straight. I'm going to use my a Versafine Onyx Black ink. I actually don't think I've used this stamp before, so I should stamp it onto something just to see that it's working all right. Here's a bit of scrap. Yep, fine. I want this to be about there, I think. Yep. I think I've got something like straight, but probably not perfect actually. Joy to the world. So we have our card now it's got a sentiment in it you can't see it from the front you can just see through on with that nice lattice and when you open it up you've got your sentiment there and you can write write um, a true from down here okay so I thought that while I had that poinsettia die out I would make another card and this time I'm making a five inch square card and I'm going to use the Denise Bodie enchantment range this is her newest range so um that points that ear die comes from denise as well so that's what triggered that so i'm going to cut a piece from this that is five inches by five inches uh, actually i'm going to make it four and three quarters by four and three quarters and i want this sort of neutrally piece here oops come up there a bit so five, uh, four and three quarters. So I'm doing, uh, oh, how am I going to do that? I want to come down there, four and three quarters, so about here. So that's eight. So four. And three quarters out there. Does that look like it's four and three quarters? Let's have a quick check. Yep, 
good. We'll go there. I can always trim it down a little bit more, can't I, if I need to. There. And then come in here, four and three quarters. So these are double-sided page papers and they have got beautiful patterns on both sides. One side is more like a backgroundy sort of pattern and the other one has got uh, a lot of detail in it, you know, look at all that. You really don't even have to do anything to decorate your pages if you're doing a scrapbooking page, that's for sure. So let's see how we did. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, now I'm going to make this one a sort of shabby looking card. So I'm going to distress the edges on this. She's using my distressing tool. I have showed numerous times before in my videos what the different uh, distressing tools look like. There's this one from Prima, which I think is discontinued now. Comes with a, this has got a lot of other tools on it as well, but I only ever seem to use the distressing section. I should probably really investigate it a bit further to see what's what. layer stand out. Also makes it a bit shabbier looking. Okay so that can go there. Makes a mess but that's what we crafters do isn't it? We make a mess in the interest of art. Okay so that's that. Now I'm going to I might put a strip of white across there, I think I will. So I want to cut that off at uh, four and three quarters. Might trim it down a little bit too, I think bit too large so what is it two inches so let's make it an inch and a half That's better and I'm going to distress that as well much easier to stress this um, thicker card. This cardstock that I'm using is the same cardstock I used on the base and I always use 300 GSM for that because I like my cards to be sturdy so they can definitely support themselves and sometimes you know I've got quite a lot of layers on these cards so I want something that's going to be able to take that weight as well. Okay, now I want to put um, a layer of paper on that and I was thinking that I'm going to go for purple for this Christmas card. So I'm going to cut a piece of that that is the same width but so four and three quarters wide but only one and a quarter inches. It's got some really pretty little 
pictures on the back, lots of little fairies and things. So a real enchanted collection. Mushrooms, doors, magic tree. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous papers. And it's interesting to note that on the uh, on the back side, the pattern goes right down for the full 12 and a half inches. So that's good value for your money. Now, distress this one. That's a bit of a mess of your ink pad, but that's what they're for, isn't it? To do our work for us. So that's going to go on there like so. That's going to go on there. And once again, let's try and clean a bit of this mess up. I'm just running over it with a wipe, baby wipe. Just to pick that up. Okay. I don't want to get my cardstock wet. Now, I'm going to, I want to wrap something around that. I've got some crochet cotton here. I'm going to use that. First of all, I'll have to attach that to that. So I'm just going to use my art glitter glue for that. I find I use art glitter glue for everything these days. I have got um, things that I've made using double-sided tape previously that are starting to come across that part now but I mean I've been doing this for 20 odd years so can't really complain about the tape giving up after that time can you but I don't think the glue will I'm not sure but um, I don't think so now I'm going to take this and I will use some sticky tape here. I'm just using normal sticky tape to hold that in place. I'm just going to wrap that around a few times. And I'm not looking to get a nice even or you know, level thing. Cut that off. Find some scissors that will cut. And some sticky tape on the back of that. So just normal sticky tape once again. And I'm just going to put some sticky tape across that to try and keep them in place. Okay. Now, um, I can go ahead and stick that down. I reckon. Yes, I don't think I'm going to. Yep. Want it like that or like that? Don't think it really makes all that much difference, does it? So let's get some glue on here. I'm not worried about going right up to the edge. I don't mind if the edges are, um, you know, loose. This down, try and get it central. Just burnish that down so that that glue gets spread out and is stuck there. Now, I think I'm going to attach this with some cardboard behind it. I've got some old water carton here so I'm going to just cut that down out here and stick that onto the back of this I might use that side to stick on that because I'm sticking that onto that shiny sticky tape. So that will just even that background out so that when I attach it on there I haven't got lumps and bumps. 
then I'm going to attach that there like so. Yeah. Or about there. So not in the middle. About two thirds of the way up, I guess you could say. Okay, let's just pop that on that, put the thing back in this, and now I'm going to get that. Now in here, I already had a white poinsettia that I'd already pre-cut, so I'm going to use that for this. I'm just wondering whether I might put that gold one in with it. So I could put that, that, then the gold one, then the white ones again. What do we think of that? Perhaps we could put the gold centre. And then that is going to go on that. So should we put the gold in? I think we will. Okay, so I'm just going to shake this the same as I did the other one. So you can see this has got little splits in it uh, for the veins. I think it's a really great poinsettia dye. So how's everybody going? I hope everybody's fine. I'm in the throes, as you can see, of making my Christmas cards. What happened to the... Oh, there we go. This tool that I'm using here is an old um, tool from my ceramic days. And that's a blast from the past. That was... Whew, that'd be over 30 years ago. Okay, and once again, I'll put a gem in the middle of that. I'll use the same ones. I've got about a million different colours. I probably should fossick around and find a purple one but in the interest of the video we'll go with one of these clear ones that we already have in hand to hand move that down into the centre and just Give it a little bit of a press. Okay, now it's going to go there like so. I want um a bit more on there I think. Look some of these leaves that are from Denise as well, this guy is, and uh, I'll, as I said before I'll put links to all the things that I can find in the description box. So it's a little set of um, three dies. I can't remember the name of it at the moment but you can see it comes like that. And, um, well, I can use, that looks right, doesn't it? it blends in nicely with that background. And um, these have all been cut from Denise's pattern papers. These are from a different range, but... And I've got some gold ones there as well that I can... To mix. I think I had a smaller one somewhere.
I'm going to take the gold out and just go with the greenish colour. I might need to just trim that back a bit. Something like that maybe. See what I think. Yep. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. So, just going to take my flower out of the way. Some glue in here. Try and make sure I get that inside the boundary of the card I'm just sticking them to this center piece that strip of mauve and I'm going under the under the um, cord so that I am actually getting it onto the card. Yeah. So now I can stick this on. I should probably get my hot glue gun out and do that so I think I will do that because I'm sticking that straight onto this um crochet cotton so I will be back when my glue gun's hot okay so while I was waiting I cleaned a bit of the mess up here now I'm going to attach my poinsettia top of glue there and position that about there like so Now I'm going to add my sentiment and I was debating whether to have a white one like that, so about like that, or whether to go for the black one. And I think I convinced myself that I like the black. So I'm going to cut this down a little. Um, yeah, I'm going to just trim that back to there and I'm going to trim this to about the same or a bit more a bit more then I might just put a little fishtail in the end you snip in and you snip to that in this corner and snip to that in this corner. So what do we think of that? Yes, I think that will be fine. So let's ink around that. Just takes that white edge off because of course this is printed on white card. Um, I think this comes from a uniquely creative Christmas sentiments pack so I can either mat that on some cardstock or uh, cardboard or just add it flat and I think I'm just going to add it flat to be honest just like, like that I like this to be the focal point so just a bit of uh, glitter glue and pop that in there I've got it straight pretty well pretty well okay so now I guess I should put a sentiment on the inside 
I will use one of these same ones and there's one in here that says tis the season to be jolly so that will do and get my where's my stamping block there we go try and get it on there straight I have used this stamp before so I know that it works fine mishaps and try and get that straight and stamp down and there we go okay so that's my second card for today so they both use the same die for the poinsettia but they look a lot different don't they so there we go that's my cards for today i hope you've enjoyed my video if you have it would be great if you would give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel or leave me a comment any of those things is great so yeah once again thank you for being here and i hope you can join me when i post my next video okay bye